You're right, R2. These walls do look really strong. Strong enough to take atomic breath. Hey everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and this is my friend R2. In this episode, we're going to be building the infamous kaiju Godzilla from our friends over at Micro World. And just like some of the other Micro World models, I think we can expect some really interesting detail and some difficult pieces to put together. I know, R2. I'm a little bit afraid too. But don't worry, Groove Builders. I think we can do this together. Let's get down to the workbench and take a look at the package. All right, Groove Builders, welcome to the workbench. We have our Micro World Godzilla in some pretty cool traditional Chinese packaging. Look at that. Very neat. At the top, we have that Micro World logo, followed by the history of Godzilla. But we're going to go into more detail about that during our build. On the right hand side here, we have our difficulty rating of six stars, which means that Godzilla here is one of the most difficult models offered by Micro World. Pretty neat. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back. On the back, we get a brief look at some of our metal, followed by a half sheet. This is a whopping six sheets of metal groovers. This guy is going to be huge. On the right hand side, we get a look at Godzilla, and then just below we have some legal garb as well as some information on how to handle this metal. Finally, on the right hand side, we have a QR code which we can scan to get a 360 view of our Godzilla if we need it while we're building, which I have a feeling it's gonna come in big handy, Groovers. Let's go ahead and open up our package. There we go. Oh my goodness. Look at all of this metal. Groovers, all the detail on here too seems to be painted on. Nope, it's definitely an ink screen of some sort. Very neat, Groovers. Let's go ahead and open up all this metal and get building. We begin by grabbing our first sheet of metal and cutting out our first couple of pieces for Godzilla's head. And already, Groove Builders, I can feel that this metal is very different than what we're used to building with. It's a little bit thinner, and I can also tell that by bending our pieces, I'm going to have to be very careful not to scratch off all of this color. And I think that might get pretty difficult later on down the road with some of the other bends that we're going to have to be doing. But before I get too carried away talking about this build, let's look at the instructions together. R2? Uh, R2, I know that Godzilla is nothing like Laika. Laika's a dog, and Godzilla is, well... Godzilla, but I've done my research and I'm pretty sure I know what Godzilla needs to eat. Well, he fights, you know, to get his stuff out. R2, don't worry about it. These are all logistics that we'll figure out later after we're done the build. Can we please just show the instructions? R2, we already did this gag a few weeks ago. Well, okay, R2, you're right. Everyone does love a puppy, but still, can we move on to the instructions now? Ah, there we go. Thank you, R2. Finally, <laughs> I'm only kidding, R2. Okay, starting at the top, we have the Micro World logo. Then just below, we have the model number, which you can type into Google to find this exact model if you want to build it yourself. Personally, I recommend purchasing it from our friends over at Crazy Toys, which I'll leave a link in the description down below if you're looking to pick this up for yourself. Just below our model number, we have a depiction of Godzilla. And if you ask me, he really does look like a paper model, but more on that a little bit later. On the right hand side, we have the Almighty Legend. This is where we can find some important information on how to build Godzilla. Looking at the top, we have the circles and triangles. Every time we see the circles, we want to take as much of the tab in our tweezers as possible, and we want to bend it over 90 degrees, usually as flush as possible to the metal. When we see these triangles, we again want to take as much of a tab in our tweezers as possible and then twist them 90 degrees. Now, one important thing that I want to note is in any Micro World build that we've done so far here on the show, we've never had any of the circles and triangles actually in the instructions. And that goes for Godzilla here too. They kind of just leave you to figure out what works best in each scenario, and personally, I don't know if that really is a good idea. Again, I would say this is a printing error, but with every Micro World build that we've done here on the show, they've never had the circles and triangles included in the instructions. Again, just a small little note, but something you might want to know. 
Just below our circles and triangles, we have two different symbols. Both these symbols represent textured surfaces and non-textured surfaces. And unlike the circles and triangles, they are included in the instructions. So when you see these two symbols, you wanna make sure that you're putting the colored side on the outside or on the inside, depending on what the step is telling you to do. Moving right along to our right hand side, we have a picture of one of our parts. In there, we have labeled our fold lines, our insertion holes, and our insertion tabs. Basically, you want to fold all these parts along the fold lines and insert the tabs into the insertion holes and secure them with either a twist or a bend, depending on the piece. This is what we refer to as the fundamentals of metal model building. And to be totally honest, if this is your first build, I would put everything down right now and go find an easier kit first. Already Groove Builders, this build is not for beginners. Lastly, in our legend, we have our recommended tool section right at the bottom. And you'll see here they recommend a good set of needle nose pliers. But to be totally honest, Groovers, I would recommend those along with a few other tools like wire cutters, which are very useful for cutting out all of our parts. Trust me when I say you don't want to bend these parts out of their metal. It won't be worth your time, and most likely you'll break the part before even getting to bend it. Some other tools I would recommend is a good set of tweezers. They don't necessarily have to be detailed tweezers like mine, but you definitely need a strong set in order to be able to bend this metal properly. And speaking of bending the metal properly, the last tool I would recommend is a good dowel set or something cylindrical to help you build this model. While there's not really any circles on this model, or any cylinders for that matter, it just helps you get some of the shapes of the Godzilla's legs and mid-torso area. And finally, group builders, at the bottom of our instructions, we have three different pictures of our metal sheets. Now, these three pictures are very useful for us because this is where we're going to find all of our parts to build Godzilla. And because we have so many different parts for this build, I recommend scratching out or blacking out all the numbers of the parts that we take out as we go along. This little trick just makes it a lot easier for us to be able to find our parts when we need them. And with that, Groove Builders, we've summed up our instructions. R2, can you believe how much trouble this Godzilla's given me? Well, I'm glad to know that I'm not alone in this, R2. And you're right, this Godzilla looks to be like an earlier version, except for the spikes here along the back. Why don't you go ahead and throw up a picture of an earlier Godzilla so they can see what I mean at home. Thanks bud, that's perfect. There, you see Groovers? Very different. But that's okay, because Godzilla has been around for a little while, and has changed her look a few different times. Not to mention her motives. But before I get too carried away, let's start at the beginning. This giant monster first appeared in the 1954 film Godzilla, and since has become a worldwide phenomenon. This led to about 31 films being produced in Japan, 3 Hollywood films, a few video games, some books, graphic novels, and even a TV show. You may have heard our lizard friend here referred to as the King of Monsters, first used and heard in the movie of the same name, Godzilla, King of Monsters. In the movie King of Monsters, Godzilla was resurrected by repeated nuclear tests in the Pacific Ocean, and comes into Tokyo to reap her revenge. Godzilla is shown on film to be a giant destructive sea monster, but that's only half of what she really is. You see, when Godzilla was originally conceived, the atomic bombings on Hiroshima and Nagasaki was still fresh on the Japanese and world's mind. Godzilla was meant to be a metaphor for nuclear weapons, and this was reflected down to almost every detail on Godzilla, including even some camera shots. Like this picture here, Godzilla is supposed to look like a giant mushroom cloud. What do you think, group builders? I personally think it's a pretty good metaphor. Unfortunately though, in some of the more recent adaptations of Godzilla, a lot of people out there think that this metaphor has been lost. Still, however, if you know where to look, you can see some remnants of the original idea. Godzilla was to look like a sinister reptile monster based around the loose concept of a dinosaur mostly seen with a tall standing posture, scaly skin, an anthropomorphic torso with muscular arms, spikes on its back and tail, and frowned brow. To emphasize the monster's relationship with the atomic bomb, 
its skin texture was inspired by the keloid scars seen on the survivors of Hiroshima. Believe it or not, in the original films, the iconic fins were just added purely for aesthetic purposes in order to further differentiate Godzilla from any other living or extinct creature from the sea and land. As the series expanded, some of the stories took a less serious undertone, portraying Godzilla as an anti-hero or lesser threat who defends humanity. There was even a movie about Godzilla having a baby, but I really don't recommend watching that. I mean, you can Google it, but I really wouldn't recommend it. Something I would recommend seeing, however, are some of the epic fights with such foes as King Kong, Mecha Godzilla, Mothra, and the mighty King Ghidorah, a three-headed dragon that's a fearsome foe for Godzilla in the movie Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. Groovers, what's your favorite monster? Make sure to leave a comment down below to let me know. Welcome back, Groovers. We did it. We built the infamous Godzilla, and look at him. He's absolutely massive. I'm pretty happy that R2 and I made some room in our collection for him earlier, because otherwise, I don't know where I would have put him. Let's talk about what it took to build this Godzilla in construction. My first point when it comes to building the Godzilla for Microworld is to make sure that you have experience with other metal models first, before attempting to build this big guy. There are a lot of really difficult pieces to form here, and sometimes you're gonna find yourself getting a little bit frustrated with how these pieces fit together. An experienced metal model builder will be able to understand when a piece is just improperly formed, and when the model's just giving you a really hard time. Both of these things happen during this build, so Groovers, experience is definitely an asset. My second point when it comes to building Godzilla is to make sure that you're taking your time to double check all of your parts before bending and forming them. And even afterwards, once you've formed all your pieces and you're putting Godzilla together, you really want to be careful. I found this metal to be very brittle and a few times I had to use super glue to fix the different pieces. While yes, it does look good now, as somebody like myself who cares a lot and really tries not to break any of his pieces, this is a really big frustration, so Groovers, make sure you really take your time when building Godzilla, otherwise you're going to break some metal. My third and final point when it comes to building our friend Godzilla is to make sure that you pre-bend all of your tabs and line up your parts before putting them together. And the reason why I recommend this is because all of these pieces really do have to line up, especially at the end. If something is even just a little bit off, this will not go together and you're gonna end up breaking tabs or even full parts off of Godzilla. So Groovers, really make sure you're taking the time to do all the detail on this model. It will pay off in the end. And with that being said, Groove Builders, let's move on to build time. Micro World's Godzilla took me just over eight and a half hours to build. And I think that that's gonna be about average for most people out there that are looking to attempt to build this Godzilla. However, group builders, like I've said in every one of my videos, it's never a race to build these models. And I definitely should have taken more time, especially around the torso here and even forming these legs. If I would have taken a bit more time, I think I would have been a little bit happier with how he turned out. And finally, group builders, my thoughts. <sighs> You know, group builders, I really did want to enjoy building Godzilla from Microworld. And a lot of the problems I'm about to mention might just be because it's the first run, but man, there's just so many different problems with this build. Like for instance, the back spikes here you'll notice are looking really silver. And the reason for that is they painted the wrong side of the spike, so all the detail is on the inside where you can't see it. Now, you could go ahead and switch the spikes out for the opposite side, but by doing that, they accidentally go the wrong way up Godzilla, and it looks even weirder. And that's really only the first problem I encountered. In the instructions where the legend is, you'll see triangles and circles. That tells you how to bend and connect all of your parts together. Well, in the instructions, there's no circles or triangles anywhere, so you pretty much have to guess how all of your parts are meant to be connected together which isn't really a big deal for any experienced metal model builder out there, but when it comes to building these harder models, it's definitely something you want to include in your instructions. Another thing I want to talk about is the design of Godzilla. They definitely took some inspiration from a paper model out there, and I'm interested to see what other metal models we might see in the future that kind of follow suit with this look. Although I think it's important that we make sure that the details translate well because sometimes paper and metal model craft don't necessarily go well with each other. 
Now that being said, the only other problem I have with the design of Godzilla is I kind of wish they would have curved this tail either to the left or right. And that's only for display purposes. Godzilla is supposed to be big and the real estate that you want to take is going to be big too. But the tail really does make it difficult to show off with my other metal models and having it curved to the left or right would have just made it easier for me to put it on a shelf. And with that being said, Groove Builders, we're at the end of our show. I had a really good time building Godzilla with you. And if you guys had a good time, don't forget to like and also leave a comment down below. If you're new here, hit subscribe as well as we got all kinds of really cool content coming out in the future. Until next time, Groove Builders, keep building. Now I'm gonna go put Godzilla down in his new little home. Hopefully it's big enough.